Most would be familiar with the word mafia, right? Thanks to movies like Godfather who gave us a peek of what mafia operations look like. But what if we told you that there are more mafia groups in the world that you didn't even know existed? For example, have you ever heard of triads? Doesn't ring a bell? Don't worry, we got you covered. Hey guys, welcome to our YouTube channel, where today we're going to talk about the triads who are popularly known as the Chinese Mafia and their untold secrets. Before we jump into the video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell button. First of all, for those who don't know, we will explain what the triads are. Triads are one of the most well-known organized crime groups who operate in China, Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, Southeast Asia, and the Chinatowns in the United States, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. They are referred to as the Chinese Mafia, or among mainland Chinese, as black societies. Many criminals among these groups work in small, loosely knit gangs that are involved in activities like armed robbery, racketeering, smuggling, narcotics trafficking, prostitution, gambling, and even contract murder. When groups began to outgrow their local area of expertise, the government dropped down with harsh penalties. The term triad is actually a relatively modern English term used to describe the triangular symbols found on flags and banners used by the Hun Clan, aka the Heaven and Earth Society. The bosses of the triads are referred to as dragon heads. The triads control an empire worth many billions of dollars. The largest and most powerful triad, Sun Yiyong, has almost 40,000 members. The unnamed dragon head of Kong Sun Yiyong was mentioned on the Asia Week's list of the 50 most powerful people in Asia. History refers to these triads as centuries-old secret societies that date back to 1000 BC, back from a time when peasants were preyed on by their evil leaders and formed self-help groups in order to protect themselves. According to legend, the first triads were found by Chinese monks who were committed to fighting injustices, and over time, these groups became so politically powerful they were able to stir up or bring down emperors at their command. The triads came out of the 18th century Hung societies and worked with foreign traders to bring opium to China. In the 19th century, they operated as secret societies and opposed the harsh rule of the Manchu Qing dynasty, regarded by many ethnic Han Chinese as outsider barbarians, and started to replace them with the old Ming dynasty. Historians strongly believe the triads may have played a role in the toppling of the last emperor in 1911. The triads thrived in the era of warlords in the 1920s, 1930s, and 1940s, particularly in Shanghai, where at its height, the Shanghai-based Green Gang had almost 100,000 members and had connections with Chiang Kai-shek and assaulted journalists who criticized the Kuomintang. Some gangs are even said to have helped the Kuomintang nationalists fight against the Japanese during World War II, and the rest is said to have become gangs of criminals that raged the Chinese countryside. The influence of organized crime is believed to have risen as the Chinese economy slowed. Organized crime has since grown in China thanks to factors including growing inequality, economic liberalization, increasing migration, and official corruption, people trafficking, drug smuggling, illegal gambling, and extortion have been their most profitable deals. A public security bureau official told China Daily, last year, the gang-related crimes have become a threat to social stability in the economy. He also stated that murder, rape, robbery, kidnapping, assault, and they dare do anything. One indication of their power and presence in China is the increasing rate of bound and gagged bodies that are pulled from rivers and Chinese waterways. Once the worst gang in Henan province roamed the countryside and were left unchecked for 13 months, they ended up robbing farmhouses and killing 76 people. Seven members, including its leader Peng Miao Jin of the gang, 
who personally cut the throat of over 40 victims, were captured finally and executed in December 1999, but the damage was already done. The most interesting fact is that some gangs even have close relations with the police, and some are even actually run by the police. Ten members of a police-run gang in Inner Mongolia were sentenced to up to 20 years in prison for robbery, rape, gambling and bribery in March 2007. The accused gang had been active for more than 10 years. Chinese triad societies control almost all of Chinese organized crime. They are one of the world's largest crime organizations with more than 250,000 members and 100,000 in Hong Kong alone. The triad in Hong Kong is believed to be particularly well connected with the Hong Kong tycoons and Communist Party elites. At some time, one high-level Communist official even referred to them as patriotic. The second and third largest triads, respectively, are Hu Sing Hu and 14K. The 14 stands for the road number of a former headquarters and K stands for Kowloon. One of Shanghai's most notorious criminals was Shanghai Du Yu Shang, also known as the Big Ear Du who was a former sweet potato vendor who started his life of crime as a policeman collecting protection money from opium traders. As the head of the gang that controlled Shanghai opium trade, Big Ear Du reportedly funneled over $20 million a year to French authorities who in return allowed him to run his operation undisturbed in the French concession. By the 1930s, Du even became so influential that Chiang Kai-shek put him in charge of the Bureau of Opium Suppression. Never one to be complacent, he lived in a house which had a secret trap door that could be used for a quick escape. After the communists took over in 1949, Mao was able to quickly break the mainland triad power. As a result, many triad members fled to Hong Kong and Taiwan and also North America and Europe. Petty criminal offenses done by the triads were on the rise in Hong Kong in the late 1990s. Officials blame high unemployment rates and a lack of jobs for their high rise in Hong Kong. It is estimated that there are almost 50 triad gangs in Hong Kong. The triads have been active in Hong Kong almost since the inception. They were mainly engaged in the local opium trade and helped and were assisted by the corrupt British police force. Corruption was so entrenched in Hong Kong that half the police force was dismissed for accepting bribes in 1898. The British rained down on the triads in Hong Kong in an aggressive anti-corruption campaign which were held in the 1970s, sharply stopping the influence of the triads on the police and the civil service. The triads are no longer powerful as they were in Hong Kong. In 1997, it was estimated that only 5-10% to of the crimes in Hong Kong were triad related. After the crackdown they had in Hong Kong, the triads moved their operations across the border into southern Chinese provinces such as Guangdong, Fujian, Guangxi, and into Macau. The triads have done well in the freewheeling capitalism of China, but it is hard to gauge how well they operate because they do it quietly behind the scenes. It is still said that they are involved in bribery, extortion, prostitution, smuggling and are also involved in shady real estate and stock market deals. Even though the triads have traditionally made their money through drug trafficking, loan sharking, prostitution and so on, in recent years they have been moving more into credit card frauds, call girl services, CD pirating computer and software. At some point the Hong Kong triad members also started extorting money from rich businessmen and doing contract murders, although most members are now small-time crooks who sell drugs and pornography on streets. Between the year of 1945 and 2000, more than 700,000 triad members were reported to have been arrested for a variety of crimes. The Hong Kong triads have been reported to have forged a large number of credit cards using info stolen from cardholders in Canada, the United States and Europe by installing recorders on credit card terminals in stores. In some cases, store clerks were even bribed in order to get the information. Many leaders in Hong Kong 
are believed to have met with the representatives of the triads to receive some help from them. Deng Xiaoping once said, there are many good guys among them by referring to them. The triads also played a crucial role in Operation Yellow Bird, which was a network that helped to smuggle pro-democracy dissidents out of China after the Tiananmen Square in 1989. But no one is sure whether the triads were involved in the operation out of concern for the pro-democracy movement or simply for the money. When asked about the future of the triads, one crime official said that while certainly some criminals will move overseas, the majority will most probably not because of various reasons like inability to severe family ties or because they simply lack the financial support required to resettle. Most recently, the triads are believed to have set up allegiances with the organized crimes groups in the former Soviet Union and developed logic bombs which are encrypted algorithms that prevent outsiders from accessing their computer systems. Before you leave, don't forget to click that like button and share your thoughts in the comments. See you in the next video.